Welcome to this uh, vodcast here at the BPS Winter Meeting uh, 2012. My name is Dan Reed. I'm part of the Young Pharmacologist Committee, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Professor Doris Taylor. Uh, this is a follow-on from the symposium that Doris, you've just taken part in, uh, giving your talk, uh, Engineering Cell-Based Solutions for Cardiovascular Disease. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to be in London, and it's certainly wonderful to have a chance to talk with you and, and tell you about some of the work that we're doing. Today, I, I really just spent a few minutes updating you and about the organ decellularization recell, call it decell recell work that we're doing at the University of Minnesota. And that's basically moving beyond using cells for repair of organs and now using them for regeneration of new organs and tissues. Where does this drive to want to regenerate tissues rather than use stem cells for repair come from? Well, it'd be ideal if we could intervene early enough in everyone's life to repair tissues, but the truth of the matter is there are, there are I believe this morning I heard there were 8,000 people today on the waiting list for a donor organ. The truth is that for many end-stage diseases, a new organ or organ transplant is the only solution, and yet every day thousands of people die waiting for a donor organ. We'd like to help overcome that. Yeah, well, your work, I'm sure, will uh, contribute significantly to overcoming well, that. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, you heard this morning also about tr uh, the first tracheal transplant. Yeah. I think it, what's so exciting about that is that it shows the proof of concept with a simple tissue, as Sally said, a tube. And now the hope is that we can move to complex organs and tissues. Think about the 80,000 kidneys that are needed every year. That's a huge number. Okay. And th this is all based on your uh, idea of using nature's scaffold. Right. To Essentially right? taking an organ, stripping the cells with detergent or some other method, and then re-implanting an individual's own cells. You might say, okay, if you're going to use nature's scaffold, don't you need, a sca don't you need an organ anyway? The thought is that one day we'll be able to use a pig scaffold or a non-human scaffold, strip the cells. It won't be immunogenic because we'll then cover it with an individual's own cells and build an autologous organ, essentially. And those cells will be stem cells? The thought is, my guess at this point is that stem cells are the only cells we'll ever have enough of to be able to do this, and that probably for building vasculature, we'll use bone marrow or blood. And then for parenchyma, if it's liver, we might be able to take a liver biopsy and grow enough cells. If it's heart, we're probably going to have to engineer some of those cells. We really don't know yet. And tell us a bit more about, about stem cells when, when uh, people uh, through the media or uh, certainly the, the lay press, when people hear stem cells, what do they think of or what are stem cells? It's, it's actually very simple. A stem cell is a cell that can do two things. It can make more of itself or self-renew, and it can become a number of different organs and tissues or differentiate into different organs and tissues. So, and we all have stem cells in virtually every organ or tissue of our body. What frightens people is that they tend to think all stem cells essentially are embryonic stem cells. And in fact, embryonic stem cells are not truly embryonic stem cells. They're fertilized egg stem cells. They're cells that are derived from an egg that's been fertilized and allowed to divide in the laboratory to about a, anywhere from eight to 150 cells. And we take several of those cells and from those, embryonic stem cells are made. I think if we had cause, called these fertilized egg cells in the first yeah. place, we probably wouldn't have the controversy we do today. I, I should say they are not fetal cells. We don't use fetuses to derive these cells. We don't use aborted fetuses. Those would be fetal stem cells. They do exist, but they're typically used for fetal surgery during And of course, pregnancy. a lot of the stem cells used in, in the work today or that are proceeding into the clinic are or the cells that are, cells. In, are, are in the adult so they can be drawn from patients, is that correct? Absolutely. The first stem cell transplants were bone marrow transplants. We used to think bone marrow was just a source of blood. We now know that 
The same cells in bone marrow that give rise to blood give rise to a number of other types of tissues. So essentially, we've been doing stem cells for 40 years, since stem cell transplants for about 40 years since the first bone, uh, bone marrow transplant was done. I think there are two approaches to science. One is asking a question and, ta and doing whatever it takes to find an answer. And the other is really developing a strategy or a tool and going in search of questions. I'm more the former, and I call that the Renaissance approach to science. Okay. Essentially bringing whatever you need to the, to the question to find an answer. Okay. I would really tell people two things. One, ask a question you're passionate about, because this is a lot of work, and you need to enjoy it along the way. And two, think simply. If you can think simply, you can probably begin to answer a question. Okay. Okay. And uh, of course, you advocate uh, following your craziest ideas. Right. What would be your craziest idea? Uh, well, certainly, <laughs> certainly one of the, cra I think aging is a failure of stem cells. I think it's okay. certainly a crazy idea to think that we can begin to reverse aging by uh, reversing the stress on our stem cells. Was it a crazy idea to think that we could transplant cells in the heart and try to repair function 20 years ago? Maybe, but it's begun to work. Is it a crazy idea to think about building an organ? Probably, but it's begun to work. So aging as a failure of stem cells is just another crazy idea that might in fact work. And I would say we all have crazy ideas every day. We just don't really tend to say them out loud. Okay. We could sit here and have a conversation for 20 minutes and come up with two or three crazy ideas, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, and uh, finally, just to, to finish off, uh, would you care to make a, a prediction for where you think that stem cell therapy or regenerative medicine might be in, in 10 years' time? Going forward, I think in addition to using cells, we're going to be using molecules that manipulate cells and really harnessing what I call endogenous repair. The whole notion that an injury happens, and then there's inflammation, and inflammation is essentially nature's cue to say, send me cells. And if you get the right cells there, you turn off the inflammatory response. If you don't, you ramp up inflammation and start getting injury. The future is about manipulating endogenous repair. We'll be doing that with cells, with genes, with small molecules. You'll be doing that. Something I look forward to. Thank you very much. Thank, for your you. Time. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And to you on your fine work. Thank you.